Hi, this is Jo Marie Domino. Welcome to my channel. Cardboard crafting is getting so popular and why not? It's inexpensive and it's a great way to upcycle. However, getting to that corrugated part, it takes a lot of time and it's hard. Well, I have a technique where that top sheet is gonna peel right off. You're not gonna have any fuzzies and it's gonna work really quickly. When I'm done showing you, and I can't wait for you to see, I have a couple DIYs that I hope will inspire you so you'll give this a try. And don't worry, I'm gonna take you step by step and I'm gonna give you the very best tips. And of course, I'm gonna be doing some decoupage. You're going to see these beautiful napkins. I get them from my friends at Vippy's Designs Decoupage Napkin Shop, www.vippies.com. And make sure you like and follow them on Facebook. They have specials, they have bundles. In fact, their mystery bundles are absolutely awesome. Crafting with cardboard is so much fun. You can do so much with it. The only problem is peeling that top part away to get to the corrugated part of the cardboard. Um, you could try peeling it. I've seen like shish kebab sticks. It's really difficult. And by the time you're done, you still have all these little fuzzies in there. Well, I have a technique to show you in this video. It's so simple and it's so quick. You can do tons and tons of cardboard. Get rid of that top layer and have wonderful, clean, corrugated cardboard. I'm going to hold up a piece piece that I did and you can see look how it, nice it is there's no little pieces stuck in there there's no little fuzzies you're not going to believe how easy this is you're not going to have to spend all that time trying to peel off that top layer instead you're going to be able to peel off a whole bunch of cardboard and then you can get right down to doing some cardboard crafting just take a look all right, now, I'm in my sink in my kitchen. Okay, here's my piece of cardboard. See that the lines run vertically and horizontal? You're going to hold the cardstock vertically like that. I'm going to put my sink on, and I have the water. It's, like, warm. I'm trickling the water down into the channels of the cardboard. As it starts to get wet, I'm going to start to peel away one part of the cardboard, which is exposing the corrugated part, all right? You're going to see how very simply I'm going to peel this away. And as I peel it away, nothing is sticking. None of that top sheet is sticking to any of those little channels. It's coming out perfectly clean. I'm going to hold it up so that you can see. Now, just because you have to get it wet doesn't mean it's not going to work. All you have to do is put this out to dry and that top sheet Look how nice that is. If you like to do vintage things, you can use that as well. Wasn't that quick and easy? You might have to practice two or three times, but that's all it took for me. And I used all different kinds of cardboard and it worked every time. All right, well, now that we have this beautiful corrugated cardboard, let's start with one of my first projects, which is this heart ornament. I got this wood heart from the Dollar Tree. I picked up a pack of them right around Valentine's Day. Now, I originally painted it white, and as I started to work on this, I decided that white would probably not work, so I decided to go with a light pink instead. So I'm going to go over the entire heart, and as you can see, I'm covering up all that white paint. And when I do an ornament, I like to make sure I get all of the sides as well, because when you hang them, you really can see that, and it gives it a nice finishing touch. So I'm making sure all the white is covered and then I'm going to put it off to dry. Now while that's drying I have my piece of cardboard and I want to cut it into the shape of a heart. Now I kind of did this old school. I took a piece of cardstock, I folded it in half and I drew like a half of a heart and then I'm going to cut that out and this is going to give me a really good symmetrical heart. I'm being a little bit picky on this. Now, once I'm done cutting out the heart shape, I'm going to open it up and I'm going to put it down on top of the cardboard, but not the side that has the corrugation. I'm going to put it on this side. Now, as you can see, the heart was a little bit bigger than the piece of corrugated cardboard I have, but that's okay. I'm going to be able to make it work. So I'm just going to take my pencil and I'm going to trace around the heart. And when I'm done, I have the heart all traced out. I'm going to use my scissors. These scissors I'm using are absolutely awesome. They are meant to use on thicker things like cardboard. And I couldn't believe what a great job they did. And for me, any tool that makes crafting a little bit easier, I definitely want to own, especially this. It was very inexpensive. And see, I'm able to cut it and trim it, and it's going to work fine. 
Okay, let's take a look at that corrugated heart. Wasn't that simple and easy? I love that. All right, now we're on to the part where I'm going to add some paint. I'm using Linen White by rust -Oleum. It's their chalky line of paint. Now I'm going to do a dry brush and I'm going to start by using my sponge pouncer because I found with this, you have to play a little bit, but you know, with the piece of cardboard, you really can play as much as you want. It's very inexpensive. So you can just fool around with all different kinds of colors. So the sponge pouncer does a good job. It mostly highlights the raised part of the cardboard. And as I was doing this, I was having a little bit of trouble getting some paint inside those little channels there. So I did go ahead and get grab my brush, as you can see, and I started to put some more paint inside the little channels. I just wanted to have a little bit more coverage, but still I'm not being super neat. I'm just slapping it on there, as you can see. And I think I'm getting to the point where I have enough. I'll hold it up so that you can see that. And now I'm going to put it off to dry. Now that the white paint is dry, I'm ready to go on to the next step. Now, this is the pink paint I used on the little wood heart. I'm going to take this pink paint, I'm going to use my sponge pouncer again, and this time I'm going to go all the way around the edge of the heart. I'm not going to do the inside part, but I am, again, I'm just roughly doing this, and I'm trying to get some um, also inside those little channels. I'm just going to go all the way around. And I keep looking at it as I do this because I want to make sure I have enough on, but not too much. So I think I'm good there. That looks nice. All right, I'm going to let that dry. All right, so while the cardboard is drying, I'm going to go back to the pink wooden heart from the beginning, and it is dry. So I'm going to take some brown paint. This is dark brown. I'm going to put a little bit on my paper plate, by the way. I love, love working on paper plates. It's something you can give it a try. I'm taking my sponge pouncer again, and this time I'm going to go around the edge of the heart. Now, again, this is going to be vintage because I'm using the cardboard, so I'm being very, very rough as I go along the edge. And as a matter of fact, I'm even going to dry brush a little bit more on the inner part of the heart and I'm not using anything special there's no waxes or anything like that this is just plain brown paint and again just there's no right or wrong so if you're a beginner don't worry about it just put on as much or as little as you want and I'm going to take a look now and I really like how that looks so I'm going to leave it like that and put it off to dry my piece of cardboard is now dry, and you know, I love it already. I love the paint on it. So this is the wooden heart I painted, and I'm going to put some hot glue on the back, and I'm using my Shore Bonder hot glue gun. It's got the fine tip, and I absolutely love it. I want to put enough glue on there so that when I place it down on top of the cardboard, it's going to make contact. And then I'm going to press down a little bit, and actually the cardboard is a little sturdier than you might think. So just make sure your top piece is well adhered. Now I'm going to put my hanger on. This is a piece of white cotton, a little strip. And I put my hangers on a little bit different than other people do. Um, I just feel like this works for me. I'm going to take the hot glue and I'm going to put it right on top of the strips of fabric. And then I'm going to place my heart on top. And I love doing it that way because I know exactly how it's going to look. And I'm going to press down to make sure that the little hanger is well adhered. Now I'm going to add the flower into the center, and this is just a faux flower. You can do any type of flower, any color that you want, and I'm going to hot glue it right into the center, and again, use enough hot glue so it's definitely going to adhere to the cardboard. I'm going to press it down, and I want to hold it up so that you can see. That is absolutely beautiful. That corrugation and those colors, it's so vintage looking, and it was easy to do. You really can't even make a mistake. Now I'm a piece of wall art, and now I'm going to add decoupage. So I'm going to cover the entire front of this board with a napkin. I want to show you the napkins that I picked out. These beautiful napkins are from Vippies Designs, www.vippies.com. Now, if you've ever watched any of my napkin showcases, and I show you these napkins, they have that print that goes all the way across nothing is cut off on the fold and i tell you that's a great background napkin that you can pick and they've got so many napkins to choose from it was kind of hard to pick one but i did decide to go with this carrot 
because I want to do something seasonal. And I'm also going to distress this so it's going to have a nice country vintage feel. All right, I'm going to put a coat of paint on the top of this board. This is Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalky Paint. And the coat of paint is going to be very rough. Now, if this is the first video you're watching of mine, well, I want to welcome any new viewer that's here today. And for those returning viewers, of course, I always welcome you back. You guys keep me inspired um, to keep going and make more videos. So viewers, I hope you like the projects I've been working on and will consider subscribing to my channel, Decoupage DIY with Joe Marie Domino. All right, I'm just going to touch up a little bit here and there. And now I'm going to let the paint dry. And you can always use a little heat gun like I have here. It's just going to speed up the process. Once the paint is dry, I'm going to do a little bit of distressing around the edge and I'm going to be using my finger sander and I love it because I can replace the sandpaper once one piece wears out and you get a whole bunch of them when you order it. So I'm going to put the sandpaper on, very easy to do, and now I'm going to go around the edges and I'm just going to do a little bit of sanding. So what I'm doing is I'm removing some of the paint and I'm giving it a nice distressed look. I want to hold it up so you can see what I'm talking about and again, you don't have to be super careful. Distressing is really a very simple process and it goes very, very quickly. Now, a big tip here is when you're done with the sandpaper, just give your project a quick wipe down to get rid of any dust that might be on it. All right, now we're ready to put on the napkin and I love this carrot napkin. Now, remember with decoupage, or if you're new, we only use the top printed ply and I love it. I think it's gonna look really good on this board. I decided I didn't want the napkin to go all the way to the edges. I wanted to have a little bit of a border this was so easy to do. All I did was take my board and I moved it a little bit over and a little bit up so I knew the napkin would be smaller when I was done. Now I did this very easily with my water brush. Water brush has a tube of water. Water feeds through to the brush and it's easy for me to trace and then do a nice soft gentle tear. And now I know the napkin is smaller than the board and I'm going to have a little bit of a border. So I'm going to place the napkin on top and I can see the border. Yes, that's exactly what I wanted. Now I'm going to hold up the napkin and I'm going to show you what a deckled edge is in case this is new to you. And that's going to blend in really nice with the paint. Right now comes the fun part. We're going to put the napkin on. I'm going to be using matte Mod Podge. That's what's in this container. I buy big containers and I put it into small containers. Now, if you're just starting decoupage, you can buy a small container at the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to start to put the Mod Podge right on top of the board. And I'm going to smooth down the napkin using my brush. Now I'm going to do something a little bit differently. Again, if you've ever seen any of my videos, you know how we always try to do different techniques not to have wrinkles. Well, guess what? In this video, I want some wrinkles. I want some texture in the napkin. So I am putting the napkin down on top of the wet glue. And you know what I'm doing? I'm taking some of the Mod Podge. And while the underneath is still wet, I have to make sure I'm being clear, I'm putting more Mod Podge on top. So yes, the glue is wet on the top and the bottom, and I'm getting the wrinkles, and I'm getting the texture I want to make a nice vintage sign. I'm going to take a piece of plastic wrap or saran wrap or cling wrap. I know it's called different things. And I have a wadded up piece of paper towel and I'm just going to rub down, uh, kind of smoothing it out and moving around. The, there's a lot of Mod Podge on there. I just want to move it around. Okay, now, one of the things that happens when you have a lot of Mod Podge on is the napkin may pull up right along, see that? Right along with the plastic wrap. Okay, now I'm going to give you a big tip here. Just put the plastic wrap back down. Pick another spot and pull up there and you're going to see you're going to be able to remove that plastic wrap and it's going to be perfect. I'm very pleased with the way this is coming out. Now, I need this to dry before I go on to the next step. So you can speed up the process again if you want by using a heat gun. All right, I'm going to put that aside because it does need a little more time to dry because I'm going to use the sander on it again. So you might be wondering, Joan, where's the cardboard? Here it is, and it looks perfect. I'm going to be gluing that right down to the bottom of the sign. Now, before I go on and start to paint this, I actually want to give you some tips about using 
chalk paint and I am using Waverly Moss Green, which is really pretty. I'm going to open it up and I want you to take a look inside. See how it's all separated? That's not the color of the paint. It has to be stirred. When you stir your paint, okay, you're moving the color all the way down to the bottom. I just use a plastic knife and as I stir this, I'm going to hold it up so you can see how the color is completely changing. By mixing your chalk paint, you're not going to have the thickness you would get when you get towards the bottom because when you don't stir it, that's what happens. Starts out thin and then by the time you get maybe halfway through, it gets very thick and it's going to look really pretty on this cardboard. I'm not going to waste any of that paint. I'm going to brush it right back into the jar. I'm going to put the paint on the same way I did with the heart. And I'm going to kind of use a combination of brush and my sponge pouncer. It gives me a nice rough paint on the top of the corrugation. And I'm having so much fun with this. I made a lot of other projects besides this one I'm showing you here. I can't recommend it enough. Plus, it's so inexpensive. You can do so much experimenting with all different color paints. I think you're really going to enjoy a project like this. All right, once I'm all done, I'm going to put that off to the dry. And now I'm back to my carrot sign. Before doing this step, I'm doing a little bit more distressing with my sander. You want to make sure that it is completely dry or that napkin is definitely going to lift. So I'm going lightly over the entire napkin and now I'm also going to be doing some more around the edge. This is adding distress. This is what's giving it a nice vintage look. And again, you don't have to be super careful. That's why I love this. When you're done, don't forget, you just want to wipe off some of that dust from sanding. My piece of cardboard is now dry and I I love the paint on that and look at this this box is made with less material so this is really a great upcycle all right I'm going to be gluing it down to the bottom of this sign so I just want to make sure I'm putting it in the right spot and that looks about right I'm only going to be putting the glue on three sides I am going to leave the top open and you're going to see why in a minute all right so now I have the glue all the way around I'm going to take my piece of cardboard and look how pretty that green is I'm telling you that's a great tip to stir that paint the color will stay like that right to the bottom so here's some florals and I got them at the Dollar Tree one of the things I did is I pulled them off the stem and then I cut that back part so it was a little bit more flat now, I thought that by doing that, I would be able to tuck it under the cardboard a little bit, kind of like a pocket. Well, it didn't really work out that way, but in no way am I disappointed. Cardboard is so inexpensive to do projects like this. I can experiment. Maybe next time I leave the wire on the flower, okay? And then I tuck it under the cardboard. So there's all different things that you can do. Again, I'm using cardboard. By adding the corrugated cardboard and these flowers, these two elements are going to give this sign so much dimension. And again, pick things that match your decor. Do it for another holiday. Oh, I think I'm definitely going to do one for Christmas. All right, I'm all done here. Well, with the flower part, and I have a little welcome sign. Now, these little bunnies, I got them from the Dollar Tree. This is how they come. And all I did is give them a rough coat of brown pink. Now I have to decide where I want the bunnies. Do I want them in the middle like that? Like that's kind of cute, but you know what? I think I'm gonna put them at the edge and make a tiny little bow for the top. Now here's my welcome sign and guess what? It's made out of cardboard and I did all that lettering. That's hand lettered. I'm going to take some hot glue. Again, I'm using my Shore Bonder. I love this glue gun. Putting enough hot glue on there so I know it's going to adhere. I don't want to put it on upside down. And I'm going to place it right there under the flowers. That's perfect. Okay, now that the welcome sign is well adhered, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the little bunnies. I'm using my hot glue gun. It's a Shore Bonder. I highly recommend it. In fact, I put the link below in case you think you might want to get one, and they're very inexpensive. does a great job. Put the bunny up there in the other corner, and my sign is almost done. I want to hold it up so you can get a closer look. Are you hooked on this corrugated cardboard yet? I hope that you are. You're going to want to share this with your friends. So just go ahead and send them over to my YouTube channel. All right, now I got to decide how I'm going to hang this. Well, after thinking about it, I decided to use a piece of wire. Actually, I used two pieces of wire and I kind of wound them together and did this little curly cue on the end and I really love how this came out 
I think it's very welcoming for a welcome sign. So there's the two projects I just made and the cardboard, I gave you a great tip, a great technique actually on how to remove that one layer and you have nice clean corrugated cardboard and you don't have all those little fuzzies and it doesn't take you forever. It's very, very quick. Now, this is not the only cardboard project I'm going to show you in this video. This is a little cardboard tube. This is another really fun upcycling project. Now, I'm going to be using the cardboard tube along with a plank I got from the Dollar Tree. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the plank. And what I did is I did a combination of three different color paints until I got it just the way that I wanted. Now, when you make yours, you go ahead and use any colors that you want. Let me hold it up so you can see. While the plank is drying, I'm going to go ahead now and paint my cardboard tube. This is white chalk paint, but you know, with the cardboard, you can use any white paint that you have. So I'm going to give it a nice rough coat. And as you can see, I'm not going all the way up to the top. That's because I'm going to cut it to a smaller size. I'm just going to put that off to dry. Now that the cardboard tube is dry, I have to decide how big I want the little pocket to be. So I have to think about the plank because that's what it's going to be going on to. So I'm going to cut it right about there. I'm just going to go all the way around in a circle. And lucky me, it ended up perfectly. So now I'm going to squeeze the bottom. And now you can see what I mean by pocket. Now I'm going to seal the bottom off and I'm going to use hot glue and that is my Shore Bonder glue gun, but you could actually go ahead and use a stapler as well. And then I'm going to press that together and wait for the glue to cool and make sure it's well adhered. Now I'm going to decoupage this little cardboard tube with the beautiful napkin I got from Vippy's Designs. They have tons and tons of napkins, hundreds of florals, www.vippies.com. And remember with decoupage, we only use that top printed ply of the napkin. So I put some Mod Podge on the front and I'm going to lay down the napkin and I make sure I have it in a good position. Boy, this napkin is so pretty. It's like a little wild flowers um, in a field. It really is pretty. I'm gonna go over it some more, put a little bit more Mod Podge on the top, and then I'm gonna wait for it to dry and then do the other side. Once the front side is dry, I'm gonna go ahead and do the back of the tube. I'm doing it exactly the same way with the Mod Podge and I'm going to tap it down with my fingers. Now to give it a finished look, I'm going to take the top part of that napkin and tuck it there inside the tube. Now that the glue is dry, I'm ready to attach it to that plank that I painted before. Now I'm going to be using some hot glue. Remember, I'm using my Shore Bonder glue gun. I'm going to put it down there on the plank. Now, I didn't tell you from the beginning, but what I'm making is a pocket posy. That means I'm going to be putting flowers inside my little pocket there. So that's a piece of florist foam, and I'm going to put that right inside. And then I'm going to go through all of my flowers. And I'm going to make a beautiful bouquet and it's going to go right inside. And now I have a posy pocket. These are also called pocket posy, which is probably the right name. Now to finish off the bottom, I have a piece of pink burlap ribbon. It's going to fit perfectly over there and it goes really well. So a little bit of hot glue. Then I'm going to take the piece of burlap ribbon and put that over the bottom. And I'm going to wrap it around and then I took a little bit of this twine and I'm going to glue a little bow down there at the bottom also and it looks really really pretty. A pocket posy and you can hang this. Some people actually hang them on people's doors as a little surprise especially around May Day.
I was so excited, I couldn't wait to share the technique I used to remove that top piece of paper above the corrugated cardboard. It comes out perfect. That process, it's so easy. I actually did tons and tons of it. I have it all put aside, so I'm ready to do more projects with my cardboard. I love the way this sign came out. It was so easy to do, adding those flowers. I'm happy I can hang it next to my front door. If you like this project and you like the techniques and the tips that I provide you, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Decoupage DIY with Jo Marie Domino. Share with your friends, give me a thumbs up, hit the little bell down there, that's a notification bell, so you'll know every time I upload a new video. You can also like and follow me on Facebook and on Instagram. And speaking of liking and following, don't forget to go over to my friends at Vippy's Designs Decoupage Napkin Shop, www.vippies.com. They have hundreds and hundreds of napkins. Vippy's, we work along together so we pick out the perfect napkins for you. Look, I'm a decoupager. I teach decoupaging. I want you to have great napkins. Thank you so much for watching.